Uh, certainly over the weekend, the uh, Internet was uh, on fire over the situation with Sheriff Nate Harmon, his daughter Carrie, at an incident that took place uh, about uh, two and a half weeks ago. Uh, Sheriff Harmon provided uh, dash cam footage and the arrest report, or the incident report, I should say, uh, regarding his daughter's accident on Cemetery Road on the night of or early morning hours of January the 6th. Uh, Sheriff Harmon agreed to come in this morning at 8 o'clock and do an interview. Uh, No questions off limits. The sheriff did not request questions in advance, as many people do when they come in for an interview. Uh, However, when they do, we don't provide them anyway. So uh, it's a worthless request because I don't give questions out uh, in advance to candidates uh, or uh, any other guests on the program, which is the policy that I have. A special prosecutor has been requested in regards to this incident by the Berkeley County Prosecutor, Katie wilkes Delegetti, And we can assume that that means a special prosecutor will be selected and move forward with an independent investigation. Uh, in a uh, text with the sheriff, I asked him if he was still coming in this morning because a special prosecutor is involved. And Sheriff Harmon said, yes, I am. Uh, in studio as well as Davy Jones, a previous candidate, for sheriff, he ran in the Republican primary a couple of cycles ago. Davey, good morning. Thank you for coming in as well. Good morning. Thank you. Yeah, come in a little closer to your microphone so we can hear you. Grab it and pull it closer to you. Very good. Thank you, sir. All right. Now, uh, before we get started, uh, I want to mention a couple of things about what we're doing here today. Uh, there's been some confusion in social media as to uh, what our role is here for today, and that's on a couple of different sides. Uh Uh, First and foremost, I can't control when a co-host in the past or one who uh, co-hosts says that they work for TV10. Uh, None of the co-hosts are paid, with the exception of Matt Miller, as Matt was already an employee here at the radio station. All other co-hosts are volunteers and and are not employed by TV10. So if somebody represents themselves as somebody who works for TV10, uh, but they don't collect a paycheck, to me that's a volunteer. Well, while we appreciate them volunteering, that doesn't mean that they work for TV10. Uh, next aspect of that uh, would be in regards to what my job is here. It's not my job to exonerate Nate Harmon, nor is it my job to prosecute Nate Harmon. There's a special prosecutor whose job perhaps will be to do that going forward. So we understand the parameters and the ground rules for the interviews. Uh, next, I will not be taking calls. When we've done that in the past, it's turned into an uncontrollable circus sideshow. And that's not my intent to host a show like that, nor will I. Uh, We are a TV and radio station. We answer to the FCC. Uh, People on social media don't. Therefore, they can do anything that they want, attract whatever audience they want, as is their right. They're not regulated by the FCC. However, radio and television are regulated by the FCC. And as a result of that, there are other ground rules that we follow, and I won't get into those. You can look up what the FCC's regulations on TV and radio stations are. But if you have a question that you want asked, you're welcome to call in, and uh, Miranda will take your question. She'll pass it along to me. If time permits, we may ask the question. Uh, First, I want to go forward now with Nate, and uh, Nate Harmon is the sheriff of Berkeley County. Nate, if you could take me through the scene. January the 6th, your daughter gets into an accident. You get a phone call from her. And what happens next? And try try to be as brief as possible. First first of all, good morning. Uh, I I appreciate the opportunity to come on here and provide uh, some uh, clarification uh, on this because of, uh, you know, the perceptional assumption on Facebook and folks that are naive enough to believe whatever they see there, um, you know, it needs clarified because – you know, when I got the phone call, it wasn't from her number. Um, I was advised that she was in an accident. Uh, my wife uh, and daughter was recovering from parainfluenza. Um, I have nobody to actually go tend to that situation. So as a father, I got dressed in my civilian clothes, and I knew I didn't want to be overbearing. So. Uh, I stayed in civilian clothes and took my cruiser because I wanted my steps to be documented. Got to the scene. 
Uh, well, prior to getting to the scene, I asked if dispatch if they got an accident on uh, near Septertown Road, and they said they did. I said I think that that's my daughter, and uh, and I'll I'll be en route. Could you advise the de- could you ask the deputy not to move the car because I wanted to see the situation. And because uh, sometimes I mean some I didn't know the extent of the accident. Sometimes they could move the car. Uh, because it's as simple as it is and and before i get there i got there i don't know 25 30 minutes later uh get to the scene uh wait roadside for the deputy to finish doing what he was doing uh there on scene uh at this point i have no idea what he had done prior to uh me my arrival and uh i think one of the very first things i asked was uh had she been drinking and uh, he said uh uh, no, not to, not that I can tell. Or no, I can't tell. So I said uh, okay. And uh, um, as the deputy continued doing what they're doing, uh, I talked with my daughter, um, which was who was on scene, sitting in a truck up the road a little bit at the entrance of the cemetery, and uh, you know got the valuables out of the vehicle. The vehicle's in my name. So as an owner of the vehicle, I requested uh, Les's towing to tow the vehicle. Um, she had a friend to drive her where she wanted to go. Uh, it wasn't my house. And uh, we parted ways. Well, I actually walked the scene a little bit mm-hmm. because I wanted an understanding of what occurred. Um, so I walked the scene, talked to myself, and looked at everything. It was... It wasn't good. It was it was bad. I'm 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 very thankful that she's still with us today. Very good. All right. So Nate, you arrive on the scene, and and we see in the video one of your first questions is, "Has she been drinking?" Mm-hmm. Okay. Is that a standard question that uh, the the deputy should have asked uh, when uh, he first came upon the accident scene? Is that a standard question you would ask when you come upon an accident scene? Well, when <laughs> for uh, a 22 year old. Uh, that's definitely and the time of the accident it, it, it does raise suspicion and uh, it's not so much that that is a initial question that one asks I'll tell you based off my personal experience because again I don't know what occurred mm-hmm. pr- prior to me getting there at this point um, you know you look for signs you look for slurred speech you look for uh, uh, glossy eyes you look for uh, imbalance um, you look for uh, the, the lack of cognitive skills in terms of, you know, you ask them more than once what happened. So how much does that change uh, in their discussion? So you're leading up to mm-hmm. um, that question, right? Because prior to that, you already have your observations. Because you ask that question, one then becomes more secretive or, or, or uh enclosed with their answers they're not as volunteering with the information so it's not a question that one should ask right off the bat it's there's observations to be done first was uh, a breathalyzer administered at the scene of the accident no all right there is a screenshot of uh carrie like we assume saying she blew a 1.6 and her daddy got her out of this uh, incident without any issues whatsoever. She walked away. Mm -hmm. Tell me the context of that, if there was no breathalyzer uh, applied at the scene. Well, I can tell you, uh, I had to scratch my head, and I I have reviewed that particular communication over and over and over again. One, it's a, a very awkward communication because the... The sender is really, uh, sort really implying that uh, that I had something to do with this, and then of course the responses from what seemingly appears to be my daughter um, uh, has nothing else to say but it is what it is, and some other things I guess she said in there, so much so where she says she blew uh, an actual number. Uh, I will tell you this. Um, I'm not going to, uh, you know, I, I don't dare dabble in that I'm a professional psychologist, but I will say that the uh, peer pressures and status uh, ladder that a, a young adult uh, feels that they have to climb between the ages of 18 and 25 is, uh, is a significant uh, 
pressure on on them if she's touting something even remotely similar to what i've read i would i would venture to say that she is portraying an image or attempting to portray an image that she is untouchable because she is my daughter uh, I can also tell you that uh, Ange and I have been very avid with our entire family. Uh, there's no name dropping here. There's no favors. There's Don't ask for any favors. Don't call me for any favors. Deputies, I've never received a phone call at my house from a deputy saying, well, what do you want me to do with this? Mm -hmm. uh, the deputies know, don't do me any favors. Someone name drops me, times whatever you're finding by 10. Uh, I've never asked for that, nor is my expectation that. Um, so I would chalk it up. The other part of that is, is I've gotten, uh, I've got evidence that the, the, the actual, uh, communications were altered and, uh, there is, uh, plenty of platforms out there and I'll read one to you, uh, that, uh, is specifically made for altering, um, Snapchats. It's called fakeinfo.net, And when you go to this, you can sit there and read uh, what fake Snapchat generator is actually about. Um, one of the most popular social media platforms with over 280 million daily active users. And I was concerned. I was like, well, how do you get the color scheme down? And how do you, uh, what, how, do you uh, uh, how do you make one of those? And I can sit there and show you that that is very much similar in color scheme to um, – the same message that's been posted and I will say this the person that supplied this information to me actually physically did a project and sent me a fake uh, snapchat uh, with my daughter's name on it and you can see right there my daughter name on it mm -hmm. and it's a test oh uh, our producer Colin says if you could hold it up to the camera right there there it is kind of tough for the resolution of the camera to pick that up Okay, and then I'll go back to this. This is on the application itself. So, Nate, did, did you ask your daughter if she actually texted that on Snapchat, that she put yes. that in, that she blew a 1.6? Does she deny saying that? Yes. Now, All right, so it's your, it's your official position is what you're saying is that's a fake production of that conversation. It is my official position that, that that it has been manipulated. Uh, it is my position that my daughter has said some things, and mm -hmm. I think some things have been cut, copied, and pasted over a conversation that has been uh, inserted to match a narrative, a specific narrative you're making. I'm not saying she didn't say one or two of those things at one point or another, mm -hmm. but it's already proven that you can grab – um, uh, excerpts from a, a message, previous message, and blend it into one you're making. Now, before I go to Joe and to Bill, there is uh, something else out there uh, about something, an incident from two years ago that's being mixed and matched and confused and creative with this particular incident. Was there something two years ago? I don't know what that incident involves. Uh, has my daughter been pulled over before? Obviously, from that video, she has. Uh, again, I've never received any phone calls. Um, she could very much say, as you saw during the accident, the way she she mentioned, my dad's Nathan Harmon. Mm -hmm. he, she didn't say my dad's sh the sheriff, but she said my dad's Nathan Harmon. Well, obviously the deputy knows who I am. Um, I can't say whether she said that before, but I will tell you that my daughter has said that that was from a traffic st two traffic stops actually where she had uh, defective equipment right tail light that i fixed that same week and if she got out of a ticket of sorts uh, because that's not any of my deputies uh, then then that's again at the own officer's discretion i didn't ask for anything and uh so if however they made that decision is is, is up to them and uh, you mentioned in your press release when there is an accident uh, and uh, there's no suspicion of drunk driving. There's no personal uh, damage that's done. If it's just property damage, a warning is standard procedure? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, the deputy gets there. They take information. They get statements. They take pictures. They walk the scene. Uh, they make sure they notify folks or at least show the attempt that they're notifying folks. If they don't get a hold of anybody, they leave information, whether it be their business card, point of contact information, or the exchange of insurance information by itself. Um, 
when they when I read the very first time I read the accident report was when I supplied it. Um, you have ten days to complete the accident report, and then there's another few where a supervisor's reviewing it. So c- approximately twelve days before it hits the filing cabinet, and that's that's. Uh, that's if everything goes smooth. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I can say that this deputy got it done in eight, um, having been off of off a few days. Um, and I first read the report and saw that she was cited for failure to use due care. Or not cited, gave, given a warning because there wasn't no personal injury. And is, is somebody who's not the sheriff's daughter in a similar situation also given a warning? Yes. All right, is, this, is this a written policy in the sheriff's department or just one that's just, hey, guys, here's kind of how we handle this? I'm unaware of any policy per se. Uh, I do know that I have confided or I asked my chief and other deputies uh, about that same thing. And uh, I've, the, the, what keeps being used is it's standard practice when no one's when there's no personal injury involved, they issue a warning because they, the, the way they look at it is you know the person damaged their car, they damaged property, their insurance is going to raise, um, you know why add salt into the wound and give them a ticket on top of that? So it, it is standard practice. Joe Ferretti. Uh, Sheriff, sure. first of all, let me say I, we all appreciate your willingness to come in and answer questions this morning and and while we're on the subject of of drinking uh because there of course as you can imagine there's a lot of uh social media buzz about this and and accusations are flying so we're going to ask some more questions of you just to try to clear as much up as possible uh with regard to this deputy who responded deputy henderson first of all did you have anything to do with him being assigned this incident no sir Uh, is that something that uh is commonly done through the dispatch system and, and the officer who hap- happens to be working that night? Yes, it's a rotational thing. Uh, so whether it's, it's state police gets one call, we get two. Uh, and then once we answer our two, state police goes back to getting their one, and then we answer two. That's how the rotation work works. Um, uh, just for any call, especially an accident, as many as we get, um, so yeah, and I even had to ask because numbers change, their numbers change at the first of the year anyway. So, uh, it's, it's, it's very confusing around the admin office about who's who, uh, after the first of the year, because their, your unit numbers change. So I had that, I even asked 911, I was like, who's, who's 155? And they, they had to look it up. Well, Deputy Henderson did show up as we know, and, uh, of course he shows up with a department vehicle. Is that vehicle equipped with a breathalyzer if the officer feels it's uh, necessary to have it at the scene? Does he always have one with him? Um, I'm not so sure if every deputy has one with them. They have the ability to have one with them. They have the uh, uh, ability to carry one in their car at all times. I mean, I was I was huge on DUIs. I think I got 73 in one year. I always have one with me. And, uh, you know, when, like I said earlier, once the, uh, if a deputy suspects uh, or an officer suspects any type of uh, under the influence uh, type of behavior or mannerisms at all, then we move further with uh, maybe a field preliminary test. Do you know whether or not this deputy on this particular night had a breathalyzer in his unit? I do not. If a breathalyzer test is administered uh, in the field, is that machine record those results so that if somebody uh, is interested in, in the whether or not a test was actually run, you could go back in the machine and determine whether or not it had been used that night? I'm, I'm not aware of that. I know the preliminary breath test is a field test, kind of like the polygraph. You, you do it, it's a tool. Um, so I don't, I don't know to what degree, uh, they record things. I, I'm not aware of that. There's been some uh, accusations made again in social media that your daughter had visited establishments that serve alcohol. One of those being the green frog bar, I think is located in Hagerstown. Uh, do you know whether or not your daughter was at the green frog the night before, uh, the wreck? Uh, I'm sorry, the night of the wreck. I know for a fact she wasn't. And I know for a fact she wasn't for two reasons. Uh, one, uh, there I do have a image from social media uh, where um, 
the owner of Green Frog has openly said that they carry video footage for uh, up to a year. It goes into a cloud, and he has he or she I, I don't know uh, who owns it uh, by name or sex, but they have not observed any footage that that has her there uh, that night prior. And the other reason I know for a fact was because I was tracking her car. What do you mean by tracking her car? I had a tracker on her car. And for what purpose? I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit more. I'm not sure if I have time, but, uh, you know, we're, we're not, uh, you know, I, had, I say I have five daughters, so this isn't my first rodeo. So when you start seeing some warning signs of, uh, of things and, and maybe some, um, uh, some, some lying of sorts, then, uh, you know, parents should go into action, and we did. Okay. Uh, when, when you uh, arrived at the scene and discussions with your deputy, you indicated that you needed to check something in the vehicle. You took the deputy's flashlight and went over to the vehicle. What was it that you were checking for? Well, uh, just uh, to clarify, I, I didn't say in the vehicle. I need to check the vehicle real quick. Uh, one, okay. I've, I never cracked a single door on that vehicle. I never entered the car or anything. I took a knee, looked behind the tire, tracker's still there, I'm done. Because she's got in an accident, I'm not losing I'm not losing my tra- I'm not losing my tracker. So. <laughs> I, I, so I understand. Have you subsequently checked the tracker to see what her whereabouts were that night? It was. Yep. What were you able to determine? She was coming from a friend's house. Uh, and is there timing uh, stamps on on this tracker so you know uh, about approximately what time she's at certain places? Uh, yes, it's approximate, really. I don't. I'm not sure how accurate it is, but it's close. But you're able to basically track her whereabouts that entire evening leading up to the accident. Uh, well, it depends on on uh, when you have it on. Uh, I, I wouldn't say the entire evening, uh, but I do know within uh, between the hours of 7.30 and time of the accident, yes. So, and you've reviewed that? Yes. And, and were you able to determine between those hours you just stated whether or not your daughter was ever at any establishment, a retail establishment that serves alcohol? No. I wasn't able to determine that. Okay. And uh, also, with regard to uh, the accident report itself, your daughter provided the deputy with a written statement. It's very brief, but it does mention a uh, a deer strike uh, leading up to uh, her losing control. Was it ever determined that a deer strike was involved in this accident? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Um, one, I feel, you know, the, the roads were slightly damp there's uh, you look at that evening and the weather that there was scattered rain uh that night so uh also the hill crest and turn i think contributed to that uh well as potential speeds um we were not able to determine any deer or existing deer matter of fact uh just as uh deputy henderson shut his uh camera off the question you'll hear me ask or or at least asked was uh, i was asking him about a deer because i hadn't walked the the past all the way over the hill to see if there was a carcass or anything like that you know when you're talking about that age i think sometimes they they think mentioning an animal will minimize the the seriousness of it or it, yeah, at least they're not admittedly saying that they made a mistake as big as that was uh, I didn't find any evidence of a deer. Uh, as a matter of fact, every indication uh, reveals that as she was trying to negotiate the Hillcrest and right-hand turn that she uh, was doing so too fast. And uh, while we're talking about the, the video cam, you mentioned that the deputy had turned it off at some point. There, Of course, there's some concerns about uh, whether or not the officer turned off the body cam uh, so that uh, you and he and could have additional discussions about this wreck uh, outside of the videotaping process. When does an officer typically determine that a body cam should be turned off, and why was it turned off in this case? The investigation was done. They do so when the investigation is over. 
They have nothing else to do. They're administratively waiting on a tow truck. Um, like I said, uh, I did not know at the time um, what uh, the deputy had completed or done prior to my arrival. Uh, you can watch the video. He clearly takes pictures. He clearly walks the scene. He's already engaging verbally with my daughter, uh, all of which has been done prior to my arrival. He's already knocking on doors. He's filling out information for those involved in terms of their property. He supplied that information. And uh, at that point, he's done. Uh, we, we, the, the deputies understand when they're done with their investigation, the camera should go off. Um, there's no reason, uh, to, to bombard the, the memory that we have within the county, uh, to, with, with frivolous, unnecessary, uh, body cam footage, uh, uh, of maybe, uh, you know, some country music playing in some deputy's car because they're waiting on a tow truck. Sheriff, that's my last question before I turn you over to, to Mr. Stubblefield. Uh, there's been concerns that maybe this body cam video has either been altered or edited in some way by your department before you published it to the public. Can you speak to that? Yeah, there's, there's no way to do that. You can't change the video. Uh, Gary Wine from IT can speak more to the, the uh, you know, and I, I, I have Davy Jones here. He's an IT expert as well. He can even further confirm that for you. Um, the initial problem I think we can collectively agree on, because I got the message from WRNR, was that it's it kind of uploaded uh, either incorrectly or was competing with some other platforms, and there was just a, a, a loop glitch. And uh, as soon as we found that out, I immediately had my assistant run over a brand new thumb drive, which I don't think they needed. I think they fixed the issue. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so there was never any um, <laughs> any editing done. And I, you know, I'm glad you asked that because it's a perfect example of uh, what a two-hour delay in what was a technical issue uh, through the Facebook court gets you, uh, you know, that we've edited stuff and whatnot. And this is the same assumptions that we're dealing with today. And, uh, Joe, we'll, we're going to take our commercial break here. And, and by the way, uh, just to remind everybody, uh, Joe is, is not a happenstance caller. Uh, Joe's co-hosting today by telephone. He's out of town, but he's co-hosting by telephone today. He's an attorney at law. We're going to take our break. We'll be right back with more with Sheriff Nate Harmon after we do this. Joining us by telephone is Joe Ferretti, attorney at law. He is not the attorney for Nate Harmon. Uh, by the way, he is a uh, frequent co-host on this program and an attorney in uh, Martinsburg. Also with us co-hosting is Bill Stubblefield, former uh, U.S. Uh, Naval Academy graduate and a retired Admiral. William. Good morning, Rob. And I should also say former County Commission President, County Commission. in which case he would have been a person who the Sheriff's Department would have come to for budget requests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I did not go to the Naval Academy. so. Oh, I thought you did. My no, apologies, no, sir. No problem. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I did not spend the weekend following social media since I... Smart I'm, move. I'm not on social media. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, Wise move. Yeah. I have... Um, uh, I have we are notified, we have been told, that the uh, uh, prosecuting attorney for the county, Katie uh, Delgatti, is going to appoint a special prosecutor uh, to look at this. And I suspect, Sheriff, it's going to be not as much as what entail, the accident entailed as would be your protocol, your procedure, and any follow-up, because that seems to be where a lot of the uh, interest has been generated. Where was your door to given special treatment? Was your door to treated uh, uh, different than anybody else? And you said a couple of things a while ago that raised a red flag with me. You said one, certain procedures are not written down. We're talking about a breathalyzer for it down there. You said standard practice. Well, I spent something like uh, nearly 40 years in the military, and I realized uh, standard practice can be abused in a lot of different ways. It's a standard practice in the eyes of the beholder. A uh, written procedure or something that you have to give, give by. So would you address and I, we don't probably don't have time to go, go in great detail, but the breathalyzer is something I would have thought would have been the basic 
part of any investigation because so many uh, accidents happen with DUI, but yet you've kind of breezed past the breathalyzer. You don't know which cars it's in, don't know how it's actually operated, yet you've spent most of your career uh, uh, as a policeman. Why have you kind of skipped over the importance of the breathalyzer? Well, it's not, uh, I'm not skipping over it as much as I am. Um, I, I don't know. It's been a while since I've, I've actually done uh, DUIs or processed one myself. Even the DUI information sheets change quite frequently. And, uh, you know, there's a lot more that goes into uh, an officer uh, detecting D, a DUI. You can, the attorney, defense attorneys have done a pretty good job at defending their clients and in court and there's been a lot of changes um i don't know if they're signed out uh i don't know if there's uh, uh one for every car uh this is just information i simply do not know and I'm, i i hate to assume um i don't uh, i have been told that uh again it, without personal injury uh the deputies don't want to add insult to injury uh, to the individual involved so they don't write a citation. Uh, whether that's policy, I have no idea whether it is or not. I've not ran across it. Uh, uh, I just, you know, I called our uh, admin staff and, and, and posed the question, and that's, that's what I received. So it's, it's only what I know. Okay, and, th and that's fair. I'm not trying to ask you something you do sure. not know. But I, am, I was struck by the fact that this was not covered under written procedures more so than uh, uh, standard uh, standard practice uh, was the speed involved at all i think there was uh based upon what well when uh you know as a father i as a, i i need answers uh why did this happen um uh trust me when i say if my daughter at any point um uh, deserved to be arrested i probably would have done jumping jacks and and said and, and would have been uh, uh really happy uh not because of what's happened here but just uh you know we've we've dealt with a lot with her uh i had to walk the scene so i can get a perspective because this isn't the first accident my daughter got into i mean she's she's we got a, a volkswagen i literally watched this one uh, she was attempting to pass a mail truck uh, her mother had did earlier and I'm literally following her mom her and myself uh, I was we were driving to a friend's house to put the one last part on her car because she she spun out in some gravel at a school and wrecked it uh, so I just got done fixing it and here she goes she's passing on a double yellow line uh, this is prior to me taking office by the way she's passing on a double yellow line the mail truck decided to make a left at a four-way and I'm watching all this take place so uh, my daughter doesn't make the best of decisions and I know this history yeah. so you could tell that uh, you know if you're swerving a deer you actually see some sort of what we call yaw marks or uh, some immediate exit of the roadway uh we did uh, i did not see that um i i walked it i looked at it uh and uh she had uh, gradually went off the roadway so i think uh, what occurred she got into a front wheel skid and lost control of the vehicle and exited the roadway on the left edge sure okay you mentioned that you were you had a tracker device on your uh, on your daughter's car and you spoke with great authority that she had not been to the green frog mm. but when joe uh, joe ferretti asked you had she been at another bar you were you said you could you did not know you cannot tell what made the green frog unique from another bar when you had a tracking device on you on her automobile because it, it gives you uh general areas and um coupled with the fact that the owner of green frog had came out publicly on okay. social media yeah. and said i viewed my footage i viewed my footage from that night the that night before the night after she in no way shape or form was in my establishment and he was going along the lines of because he was getting attacked and, and i believe other people was actually utilized that false information that she came from uh green frog and uh you know you you look at the you know nearest address of that area was she even in the area i can tell you she wasn't Okay, so you're saying the resolution of your tracking device is not precise enough to uh, to say whether she was or was not at a particular location. 
Correct. It shows area. It shows, it shows area. It doesn't so, show like exact addresses. So your your emphatic statement where she was not there should be amended, say, because of the uh, of the uh, of the owner of the green frog, more so than the tracking device. I don't. What do you mean amended? Well, you you said you knew for two reasons that she was not the green frog. One was the comment to the owner, and the other one because you had a tracking device on the on your on a car. But yet you're saying now that the tracking device was not sufficient resolution to tell that she was in a particular place. No, I don't. I don't need an amendment. I can tell you that it, when she drives on Shepherdstown Road, it'll show me that. Okay. Okay. She was never on Shepherdstown Road. You couple the fact that she was never on Shepherdstown Road with what the owner said. I emphatically disagree with the fact that she came from Greenfield. Okay. Uh, let me go back to this a little bit, uh, this thing about uh, procedures and standard practice. Uh, what I know about police work is capsule and watching Perry Mason years ago, so I don't really know very much about it. But I would think. I would think that with an accident at night uh, where there was damage to the automobile, and I think there's also uh, property damage with the, the mailbox, I believe that's correct, would there not be standard uh, 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 procedures to give a citation for reckless driving or failure to maintain control, something like that? No, you start coming up with procedures like that, then you're, now you're working for the insurance companies, and we don't work for insurance companies. We don't do that. Um, it's always, for the most part, been the discretion of the officer, and that's with any agency you see. Uh, I, I don't know of any policy that dictates that you will issue a citation on this this and this i've never seen such a policy well <laughs> your comment about working with insurance companies is a is a deflection that's uh uh i i am i'm more concerned about why why there are not certain procedures in this case followed the uh why reckless driving or failure to maintain control uh would that have been given to somebody else would that have been given to another individual no, there's no personal injury involved. And that's the, so you can go in and you can literally destroy a house. You could run into a house. Uh, and, uh, and as long as there's no personal injury, you would not, would not say there's reckless driving or failure to maintain control. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that. That's kind of going to a little bit more of an extreme. Yeah. If okay. someone, you're driving through someone's living room, yeah. um, you know, there's a significant amount more worth of, uh, uh, damage to one's property I, again i would say it was be up to the officer's discretion okay. really and is it uh is standard practice only have one officer per scene I, yeah there's never i don't we're single vehicle accident with uh uh damage to to just property yeah i don't there's we we <laughs> we handled over twenty seven thousand calls for 2022 mm -hmm. so it's not so much that we even have the availability to provide two per Per accident, but uh, you know, accidents like what she got into happens multiple times throughout the week. Yeah. Do you have any idea who the special investigators, uh, uh, special I guess investigator, will be? Will be from the area outside of the area? Do you know? I do not know. And when do you think uh, the prosecuting attorney will identify that person? By the way, let me clarify the process for that. Uh, Katie Wilkes Delegate, the Berkeley County prosecutor, said that that request goes through Charleston. They will actually be appointing the special prosecutor from the Capitol. Who in the Capitol? I don't know who specifically in the Capitol, but it comes out of Charleston. That's interesting. I uh, I I would not. I'm I'm curious what part of the our. I'm sure if Katie's still yeah, listening, yeah. she'll text the answer okay. to me yeah. momentarily. Yeah. And I'm sure she's right. I just I find that to be curious that it would. Uh, the executive director of the I told you she was listening. The executive yeah. director of the prosecuting attorneys institute appoints the special prosecutor. And do we have any idea when that will be, Katie? I'll wait for her yeah. text and answer. Did you have another question, Bill? <laughs> no, I do not. Thank right, you. Uh, Joe, let me go back to you via telephone. And again, Joe yeah, Ferretti right. co-hosting by telephone. He is an attorney, but he does not represent Nate Harmon. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Well, Sheriff. Uh, look, I. Berkeley County Sheriff's Department has, what, 60 to 70 deputies and probably uh, many more who work in an administrative capacity, plus your familiarity with the whole of county government. Does your department have a policy with regard to the investigation of any potential crimes or automobile accidents involving a relative, a family member, or someone who's uh, affiliated with 
the sheriff's department. Do you have a policy of bringing in either the state police or some outside agency to do the investigation uh, out of a concern about a conflict of interest? Uh, no, no, not at all. Um, let's keep in mind, though, um, when I took the oath of office as sheriff, and within that oath, uh, I didn't give up my parental or fatherly rights as a as a father to his daughter. Um, so, uh, you know, again, I will echo the fact that I showed up as a father, uh, and, and that was my capacity there entirely. Let me kind of follow up on that. Uh, who called your sheriff after the accident? Uh, my daughter Your from daughter did, a okay. friend's phone. From a friend's phone, okay. So was a friend with her in the car at the time? No. The friend was following her in another car, is that right? Or I don't know exactly where the friend was at the time. I know that they were there when I arrived. Well, that, okay. Joe? Was that was that friend questioned at all? Did he And did he give a statement to your deputy about uh, – if, whether or not he witnessed the accident or the whereabouts of your daughter and him prior to the accident. On the video, there's somebody in a pickup truck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it, I would assume that the deputy talked to him. I mean, they were they were together, so he's on scene. Uh, I'm not sure what he witnessed. I never, I didn't talk to him. Okay, well, I, I didn't see anything on the body cam footage with your deputy of having talked to that witness uh, uh, other than asking if, if the driver of your automobile and your daughter, in, in other words, was okay. But uh, you're not aware of him being statementized in any way? I'm not. Uh, back to this body cam footage uh, issue, because, again, uh, the, the allegations persist that it's been somehow edited or cut off. The CAD report, which, uh, for those who don't know, is, is a basic report filled out by an investigating officer responding to some incident such as this one. It indicates that the investigation was wrapped up approximately one uh, twenty a.m., which would have been almost an hour and a half after the report of the incident and, and, and close to 75 minutes after the officer arrives at the scene. Yet we only have about uh, 35 to 40 minutes of body cam footage. Explain again why you think the officer cut the body cam off when he did and why we don't have the additional recordings of what transpired leading up to 1.20 a.m. when this investigation was officially closed. Okay, so um, uh, before I, I mentioned that uh, when the officer's done doing their investigation and the investigation is complete, um, regardless of what any parent uh, has to say or in terms of additional questions could you you can imagine parents arriving on scene and, and, and questions uh, galore but if the deputy or officer is done with their investigation they shut the camera off when they're done they're done there's no reason for unnecessarily uh, recording um, any other thing and again my question was for uh, about the, the the deer, which he obviously notes within the report that there he didn't wit- see any. Uh, I wanted to walk the road to see if I could find any. Uh, my question was if he saw anything, because like I said, he was there for, for quite some time before I got there. So, uh, and again, I want you to, to address, you, did, you gave no direction to him to stop the body cam operating. No, no, not at all. Like I said, that entire scene was his to do whatever he wanted to. The uh, officer on the body cam footage is also shown taking photographs of uh, the car from the outside and the inside. Uh, those photographs have yet to be published by you or your department. Do you plan on doing that? I, I guess they can be published. I'm not sure if uh, what uh when when they'll be uploaded or or whatnot so if they're there or if they're being utilized as part of the report i'm sure it can be uh requested how experienced well, the, the, i'm sorry i'm sorry uh, joe go uh, ahead i was, just, yeah. I was gonna say the last question the, the crash report indicates that the uh, photographs were in fact taken and in fact the, if you watch the body cam footage it shows the officer taking photographs uh that's typically appended to the report once it's completed and the date of completion is one eighteen twenty three. So uh, is it safe to assume that there are photographs that accompany that report? Yeah, there should be. I mean, I'm not 
I'm not doubting or saying that there's not. Or, you know, he obviously took photographs. The photographs would be included within the report for sure. Okay, how, how, how experienced is uh, uh, Deputy Henderson? Uh, he's he's one of our most senior officers. So he's been around for quite a while. Yeah. So, and um, uh, as a as a sheriff, not as a father, uh, were you satisfied with the way that the investigation proceeded on the night of January the sixth? I'm. Uh, I was more concerned about my daughter that evening. Uh, I wasn't paying much attention to uh, how the deputy was. Uh, doing his investigation i would uh, i assumed at that point that he did what was necessary and you know after i look at everything that he did uh there, you know no deputy would have done anything different than he did okay. so you you made a statement earlier that you chose to go to the scene in your uh, official car your sheriff's car but yet you were in civilian clothes mm -hmm. uh you made the statement that you wanted to be show uh, uh identified with your position but why did you not wear a uniform well, um, you know, when when you wear a uniform to the scene, it could be, the perception could be authoritative. Um, I didn't I didn't want if I could negate any any potential perception in that manner. I wanted to. Besides, it was uh, you know it was uh, fifteen twenty minutes after midnight or something like that. She woke me dead out of sleep, and truth be told, that's a lot of stuff to put on. Sure. Nate, just a couple of minutes left here in this uh, hour. A uh, couple of questions for you. Over the weekend, I was uh, not wanting for additional screenshots of conversations from relatives of yours uh, or your daughters in regards to your daughter's behavior, uh, one of which appeared to be from an aunt saying that the last thing needed is you covering up for Carrie's behavior, that she has a problem. I'm paraphrasing here and attention needs to be paid to it. Are you covering up a DUI for your daughter? No, I'm not. Was no breathalyzer uh, administered that night, period, end of story? Period, end of story. After the dash cam footage cuts off, nothing took place further along the way in terms of an investigation of this? No, nothing took place. No. From everything that you've told us about your daughter, and I don't know how much of this Deputy Henderson would have been exposed to, obviously he's responding to a scene, from the history that you've been explaining here, it would appear that a breathalyzer would have been something that made sense, considering her history, and the fact that there was speed involved in this accident, excessive speed for that road at night. And by the way, the green frog is off of Route 45 on the way to Shepherdstown, by the way. I think someone earlier may have mentioned Hagerstown. Would a breathalyzer not have made perfect sense here? No. Like I said earlier, it's a, you know... There were speeds involved. Uh, uh, you know, you you can't disprove the the deer, though. I don't believe that there was one. Um, the the officer gets on scene, and if they observe, and it's not you don't go up and because they ran off the road, go ahead and stick a tube in their mouth and tell them to blow. That's not the way it goes. Uh, despite what people may assume, you have to observe uh, any behavior or mannerisms that indicate uh, or point in the direction of drinking. Again, uh, the, the, not only the roadway uh, and the right-hand turn and the hill crest uh, as contributing factors, but potentially her speed. And there is multiple accidents that occur throughout the the weeks uh, that we investigate that uh, you know doesn't involve alcohol uh at all uh when you say her history um you know that's uh that's not something the you know i don't i, I don't do a tell the type at the department and say look what my daughter did today uh the deputies don't uh know my daughter's history uh, in terms of uh, well, she, she likes drinking, so I'm going to go ahead and blow her. It's 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 not that at all. Right, but you you do know her history when you show up on the scene. I do. Yes, and and, and that's why. Now now keep in mind, you know, I know body cameras are running, mm -hmm. right? So as a father, and, and I'll say this again, if she had been, uh, if she was, if the deputy felt that uh, she displayed signs of intoxication and ran her through field sobriety, I probably would have been in the back uh, shadows clapping and saying, do what you need to do. And I'm very proud of our department for, for doing what they need to do and doing their jobs without any influence whatsoever. And uh, they need to keep that in mind. 
So when, um, you know, I'm not going to dictate what the deputy should do or not do. Matter of fact, that would have been, imagine if I would have took my personal vehicle and showed up there. Oh, my God, I would have been hiding something. Um, uh, or I started pointing and saying, deputy, I think you should do this. Or deputy, I think you should do that. That is me dictating the scene. Again, I responded as a father. Uh, I, I looked at the scene, took a step back. If the deputy felt that there was precursors involved where he should, he he would. Uh, right. There's always a PBT available. Like he could request one if there wasn't one in his vehicle. And uh, for for his investigation, he felt that there wasn't one. And I asked on camera, had she been drinking? And the deputy indicated no, not that I can tell. End of story. That's that's it is what it is. That's not. I mean, I. You, I guess you could have stuck a tube in her mouth for general purpose, but um, you know, it's it, nothing indicated that she was under the influence. Uh, you mentioned you were there more as a father than uh, Sheriff Nate Harmon. Uh, did you make a direction to not move the car yes. on the video? I, I asked. I asked if the deputy could not move the car uh, through my call with 911 again because um, uh, you know I don't want my daughter. You know, my, my daughter uh, hasn't been truthful all the time, obviously, with anybody's kids. They know what I'm talking about. But um, I wanted to see what happened. Uh, I'm pretty decent at uh, accident investigations, and I can see uh, through my experience what occurred, and I wanted to see that. And uh, the, on the incident report, it lists the road conditions as dry. You had mentioned earlier it had been raining off and on. Your daughter mentioned wet roads. There's yep. a conflict there. Uh, damper. It, well, I, 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 it may be a conflict, but I can tell you what. It's also another indication that I didn't dictate what that what should be on that report and what should not be on that report. My opinion is it could be very much, uh, you know, slightly different than uh, the other deputies. It happened uh, sh- shortly after midnight, so caught frost, caught uh, a little bit of dampness. Regardless, uh, you take the the wet roadways away, you take that away, you still have a hill crest and a right-hand turn that that I personally feel she negotiated too fast. Uh, Is there anything else that you can make public out of this, including your own personal tracking data? Anything else that can be released? Well, um, I'm not. I'm not going to release the the tracking data. I mean, if you already if you already look, they are personally attacking uh, my daughter. Uh, you know, telling her to go kill herself and and different uh, barrages of attacks and you know getting involved in her personal life. I can assure you that uh, her mother and I have been very uh, or attempted to be very engaging in uh, trying to uh, help. Our daughter, uh, uh, I love her very much, and uh, as any parent would, I want to see her through things. And every time I've been behind the podium, I can, uh, I've, I've said this multiple times, uh, there's not many people that, uh, uh, you know, the problems of Berkeley County hasn't affected, whether it be drugs or some type of substance abuse, and I meant that. Um, you know, my suspicions of, of my daughter's shenanigans, uh, just like any parent with their kids, um, you know, was um, enough for my wife and I to take necessary measures to be proactive about it. And that's what we were doing. Um, I asked that, the, you know, my life is an open book. I don't, I, you know, for the public, that's, you know, dig on me all you want. However, my daughter and my family are not. And I'm, I'm not allowing them to succumb to uh, the ridicule. I'm concerned about my daughter's mental health. And, uh, you know, I would respect that people appreciate that as well. Joe or Bill, any final questions for Sheriff Nate Harmon? Bill says no. Joe, no. via telephone? Uh, just lastly, real quick, Sheriff, uh, you mentioned earlier in this interview about the uh, possible alteration of the Snapchat excerpts. And I'm sure you understand the implications of what's said in those Snapchat conversations uh, purportedly those involve family members uh, have you been able to check with family members to see if those snapchat dialogues actually took place they they continue to say family members i'm going to tell you something this right here that that aunt that so-called aunt hasn't seen carrie never given her a birthday card never called her wished her happy birthday nor has broke bread at my table uh, or anything for over 15 years and the only reason she's coming out is to validate her own dollars uh, accusations, which I've spoken to, uh, you know, uh, 
a lot of people. Uh, you know, there are a lot of motivations behind what you're seeing and vendettas uh, between what you, between children uh, that has occurred that uh, that sparked this initial attack. Uh, though I have expressed on multiple occasions, I would never cover up uh, a DUI, or I would I never cross. I ran against that. Uh, on the good old boy system and the, 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 the those kind of things. I don't play favorites, and, and uh, my department knows that. Uh, this uh, so-called, uh, uh, you know, people that want to say that they're my family uh, know that, and that has been expressed to them, but yet they chose to do what they did anyway. Uh, based off what? The initial accusation itself. Nate, final word is yours. So... <sighs> You know, it, it, it's, it's one thing for me to be under attack for a dis- decision that I made departmental related. Uh, but again, uh, I don't have family here to pick up the phone and say, go pick up your daughter. She just, or go pick up my daughter. She's just been in an accident. Uh, and uh, as a parent, as a father, uh, the, the unrealistic expectations of uh you know those on facebook and i will say the majority of those are out of state and uh and have a lot of anti-law enforcement rhetoric on their own pages uh so there's an immediate bias already and they they love eating this kind of stuff up and implying the the potential conspiracy theory uh which has contributed to this but you know it's not like I'm going to hang up the phone because, oh, no, I can't, I'm sheriff, and then hang up the phone and roll over and go back to sleep. If your daughter called you and said that they had just been in an accident, uh, mind you, every bit of conversation I have with my daughter is just as clear as we're having it now. No slurred speech, uh, uh, no imbalance, uh, no odor of alcohol present. Uh, you know, So... I responded as a father, and I actually took extra steps to document my actions. I could have took my personal truck, and, and you know, and I I could have uh, uh, went over there and, and asked and made constant directions to the deputy, and you know that that in and by itself would would make this whole situation ten times worse. Um, you know, so. I purposely thought about any implications of me having any influence in this situation, but I assure the public uh, of Berkeley County, uh, the citizens of Berkeley County, that in no way, shape, or form did I manipulate anything, anything that happened on scene, that I responded as a father would respond to their kid's accident. And I would like for folks to understand the viciousness on Facebook that's occurring against my daughter and I've spoken with multiple people in terms of, you know, substance abuse, drug addiction, stuff like that, to get advice, seeking advice in terms of potentially helping my daughter if we've had identified a potential problem with her. You're talking about someone, uh, hypothetically, that would be at my house maybe twice out of a three-week period. So it's not like we got a chance to see her a whole lot. We did have our suspicions of potential issues that she was having in her life, like many families experience in their life, and we were actively trying to deal with those things, Um, this not being one of them. You take the title away from my name, and I'm still a father showing up to an accident, which happens multiple times throughout the week. The only reason this is getting attention is simply because of my title. Sheriff Nate Harmon, thank you very much for your presence here today. David Jones, thank you. Thank you. And uh, that concludes our hour plus with Sheriff Nate Harmon.